So history option, as you all know, no need to take the book as such, no, just listen. History option is one of the options of UPSC exam like any other subject. And this is one of the best options. And anyway, this year, uh, first ranger was from history option. My student got the 72nd rank also. 72nd rank is the topper this time. And this time I had only one result. And because only three wrote the mains. So one result in only in the way, it's not my mistake. Only three students cleared the prelims and they wrote the means. Out of that, only one cleared this time. Then, first let me explain the subject and what's there in this uh, UPSC plan. You know, our history option consists of two papers. Paper one and the paper two. This paper one is for 250 marks, and the paper two is also for 250 marks. And the paper one includes ancient India, and the medieval India. And paper two, modern India, and world history. World history means it's a modern world history. That is from 1750 onwards. You don't need to study the ancient or the medieval world history. We will be studying only the modern world history. So this is the plan of our subject. Ancient India, medieval India in the paper one, and the paper two, modern India and world history. So 250 marks, two papers. Then uh, ancient India, medieval India, modern India, world history. So we will be completing the sessions maximum in three months okay maximum three months uh sorry minimum three months we will finish it maximum maybe one more month okay four months so if we start in this july august september october august september october and by the beginning of november or by 15th november we will finish the sessions and anyway for the last two years the classes were in online but now we are back with the offline so ancient India, medieval India, modern India, world history. Then next thing I will say, the subject, how the subject is. The biggest problem that every history student hears from others is that this is a vast subject and it will never finish. Okay. This is a vast subject and it will never finish. Okay. So my point is that history syllabus is not actually vast. It's not actually was, and it is actually one of the smaller subjects. For example, I will say Indus Valley Civilization. You all studied that in the class, Indus Valley Civilization. See, UPSC syllabus, the lengthiest one in the, if we measure the syllabus with a scale, this is the lengthiest syllabus. Okay, five full pages are there. History option syllabus. Print out if you take five full pages will be there. Some options can be finished in just one page. But that's a misnomer. I will explain that. Had the UPSC just mentioned Indus Valley Civilization, it would have been over. But UPSC explained the history syllabus. Origin. Date. Uh, main features. Like urbanism and all, then art, religion, decline, continuity. So they explain what it is. So UPSC made it easy that what you have to study from the topics. Indus Valley Civilization. Had UPSC just mentioned Indus Valley Civilization, Vedic Age, Post Maurya, Mahajanapada, like that only. This syllabus would have been finished in one page. But UPSC explained. This is the well-explained syllabus. And there is not even a single question asked outside the terms mentioned in the syllabus. Syllabus will parayatha uri gariyam bolum. Eidu vera chodhichamila. Only the questions are asked from what is mentioned. At the same point, I am taking one option. Malayalam literature. See, I am not against any option. But for your understanding, I have to do this. There is one topic called Khazak in the Itihasa. It's a book. 
ഖസാക്കിന്റെ ഇതിഹാസം രണ്ട് വേർഡിൽ സിലബസ് ഇത് ഓക്കെ ദ സിലബസ് ഈസ് ഓവർ ഇൻ ടു ടേംസ് ഖസാക്കിന്റെ ഇതിഹാസം ബട്ട് ദ ടൈം യു ഹാവ് ടു റീഡ് ദാറ്റ് എൻറ്റയർ ബുക്ക് ആൻഡ് അനലൈസ് ഓൾ ദ തിങ്സ് വി വിൽ ഫിനിഷ് ദ ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓപ്ഷൻ ദാറ്റ്സ് ദ ഡിഫറൻസ് സോ ദിസ് ഈസ് വെൽ എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ മലയാളം ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ ഗോട്ട് അറൌണ്ട് ട്വന്റി ബുക്സ് ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് ഇരുപത് ബുക്ക് വായിച്ച് നോട്ട് എഴുതി പഠിക്കും അല്ലെ സി പീപ്പിൾ ആർ ഡൂയിങ് ദാറ്റ് പീപ്പിൾ ആർ ഗെറ്റിംഗ് മാർക്സ് ഐ നോട്ട് സെയിങ് ദാറ്റ് മലയാളം ഇസ് ബാഡ് ബട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ടേക്സ് മോർ ടൈം ബിക്കോസ് ഐ ഹാഡ് ബോത്ത് ഓപ്ഷൻസ് സി ഐ റോഡ് മൈ ഫസ്റ്റ് സെക്കൻഡ് മെയിൻസ് വിത്ത് ടു ഓപ്ഷൻസ് ടു തൗസൻഡ് എയ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ടു തൗസൻഡ് നയൻ ഹിസ്റ്ററി ആൻഡ് മലയാളം ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ ഹിസ്റ്ററി ആൻഡ് മലയാളം ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ സോ ഐ നോ ഹൗ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് എ പെയിനിങ് ടാസ്ക് ടു സ്റ്റഡി ഓഫ് ദ മലയാളം ഓൾസോ സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ സെർട്ടൻ അതർ സബ്ജെക്ട്സ് ജസ്റ്റ് ദർ ഈസ് എ ടേം political thinkers and thought okay just three words but the syllabus is not over you have to start from plato aristotle socrates chanakya machiavelli to marx to modern thinkers some 20 thinkers their thought and the theory it will again take half of the time to finish the history syllabus so history is not that vast okay and already you are in my class you know that the classes so we know what to teach see as i said today vijayanagar someone was saying i can teach vijayanagar for 10 days taking each and every king hari hara first what he did bukka what he did devaraya second what he did like that we can take one king one day krishna devaraya can be taught for two days but that's not required so that's why we are the faculties here we are experienced in that what to teach and what not to teach so history option is not vast then next one our subject plan uh see this is how the questions are asked see paper 1 how the questions are we have 1 2 3 4 <laughs> and paper 2 5 6 7 8 total we have eight questions when i was preparing for the first time in 2008 and 2009 it was little tricky this exam pattern was first question was a map then a 60 marker another 60 marker another 60 marker map for 60 here another 60 marker another 60 marker another 60 marker another 60 marker at that time paper was for 300 marks okay you have to write five questions you have to write five questions see this option gives you choice there is no need to cover entire syllabus i will cover the cover in the class for you you can focus on important areas see how the question even today also it's like this question number 1 map is compulsory question number 5 is also compulsory that is from section paper 1 is ancient india paper 2 is medieval india first and the fifth questions are compulsory that you should attend map question and another one from medieval india you should attend then you have to choose one more from each section one more from each section any of this three you can choose one say we are choosing three you choose one more here eight so now total four questions from remaining four questions you have to choose any one that means two compulsory question and two questions you have to identify from section a and section b and any one of the question according to your choice let it be this one so eight questions are there only five questions you have to do so in case of ancient india how when i was preparing what i did ancient india we had 12 modules more in medieval india also 12 modules first module sources of india then the prehistory of india indus valley vedic age mahajanapadas and mauryas that's the first six what i used to do is that i will study only that six modules i will study only that six modules at that time six only because one question is always assured from that six so what i used to do was that i will do the map which is compulsory and i will write one more question from ancient india by studying only 50 percentage medieval india i will study little more i will study almost all the 12 modules and i used to write from this three questions from this section so we can plan accordingly that's according to your choice if you feel ancient india more better you can focus three questions in ancient india if you focus uh, more in medieval india you can focus more there likewise the same in world history and modern india but the problem was that 
at that time assume that you are not in a position to write one question assume that you wrote four questions and the fifth question you don't know that's the end of your chance because you lose a 60 mark question and you are losing minimum 30 marks because uh, maximum marks at that time see no one is getting 300 out of 300 150 160 is the maximum mark you know that every subject upsc the winner's percentage out of uh, not even 50 percentage upsc won't give 50 percent mark to any question very rarely they give so at that time if you don't write one question for any of the paper of that uh, option that 30 mark is gone and your chances for clearing the mains and the interview is reduced so that was a threat at that time and not only that one question you have to write for 60 mark that means 600 words on one topic so that means you have to study a topic in much depth you have to study too much otherwise you won't write 600 words but now from 2013 the pattern changed and that is greatly advantageous for history so this is the old plan now i will explain the present plan present plan you know now the paper is for 250 marks now how this happens is that i'll write it again paper 1 paper 2 question 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now the question is divided like this first one is a map question then this is divided into 2 a b and c 3 a b and c 4 a b and c with a marking 15 15 20 or in the paper 2 20 20 and 10 this is how the marking scheme one question is 1 a b and c if you are attending one you should attend all the three in that you cannot take 1 a 2 b and 3 c like that 1 a b and c like that here it is divided into a b c d e 10 marker five questions and the remaining a b c a b c a b c advantage is that now you just have to cover the topic in a minimum way because you are maximum writing only a 200 word answer so assume that you are studying uh, quit india movement okay you will have some idea about quit india movement even if the question comes in a very twisted manner also 20 marker question you will be in a position to write something about quit india even if you don't get 10 marks eight marks is assured earlier 60 marks only 30 mark was given now what is happening is see for example you can write 20 marker very good you will get 12 marks 12 marks and if it is again good you will get how much 30 marks out of 50 this is a very good mark 60 percentage 60 percentage no one gets in the option okay very rarely the people will get and even if it goes like a 10 10 and 5 also you are assured of 25 out of 50 not bad so the point is that now you have to very easy way to prepare syllabus is that what all we are studying all the topics just prepare a not minimum for 200 words just prepare a note for 200 words for each and every topic of our optional syllabus you will be in a position to write and not only that we have choices out of eight questions you have to need only five questions so now you will get more marks that's another thing then materials see there is no need to study too many books okay no need to study too many books for our upsc preparation i will just show you the books from the amazon so that you can see the books also. So earlier we have to prepare for 600 word answers. Now maximum 200. The work is reduced. See, for ancient India, we will use a book, Early India by Romila Thapar. This is one book. This is a book. Yeah. 
early India by Romila Thapar. Not page to page, sentence to sentence, because Romila Thapar wrote the book not for UPSC exam. Okay, Romila Thapar wrote the book not for UPSC exam. Here we will be focusing the history from Mauryas to Gupta. So only three chapters. Mauryas, post Maurya, and Gupta. These are the chapters you need to study from this book. So this is one. Clear? Then next one. Pinder Singh, very wonderful book. Again, her thesis only. Again, this is also a reference material. Daughter of Manmohan Singh, faculty of St. Stephen's College, Delhi. This book from Stone Age to 12th century, we will use this to study from Stone Age to Mauryas. Stone Age to Mauryas is the focus area here. Stone Age to Mauryas. This two books is enough for ancient India. And I will give you the class notes. And that class notes is the core. And if you could follow my class notes, 50% mark is assured. Even if you don't touch these books also, if you could follow my class notes, 50% mark is assured. How that? That I will show you after this, how the marks are ensured. So these two books and the NCRT by Aras Sharma, old NCRT book. That's enough for modern India, sorry, ancient India. Now for medieval India. Yeah, this one. See, this is an NCRT, no need to purchase that. You just get these two books. Sadish Chandra, two books are there. Medieval India, part one and part two by Har Anand Publications. These two books for Medieval India. There is a single book called Medieval India by Sadish Chandra, not that. This book by Har Anand Publications. Har Anand Publications. Again, reference. Because... 90% of the syllabus we will cover in the class in detail. 10% we are not covering is the unimportant areas. Because there are certain areas in our syllabus, not even anyone knows about their history also. They mention in our syllabus, Kadambas. And no one knows that Kadambas were a dynasty ruling Karnataka other than that nothing is studied anywhere. So in syllabus, they have mentioned everything in India. 10% to 20% unimportant areas are there. Once the class is taken, we will explain that. So this is enough for medieval India. Nothing else is required. And if you want one more, you can go for Zalma Ahmed Faruqi. Her book is also there. It's also a good book. But it's just like a reference only. Certain topics. This book. A Comprehensive History of Medieval India. Zalma Ahmed Faruqi. For some factual things, this will help you. This book can help you in the prelims also. Okay. Selma Ahmed Faruqi. So that's enough for medieval India. Then for modern India. From Plasi to Partition and After by Shegar Bandobadia. This book we used to study till 1857. Though it is up to 1964 and 2000. We focus, our focus area for this book is 1757 to 1857. 1757 to 1857. Only 1757 to 1857. Then, actually we will cover that in these all areas in the class, but as this is your optional subject and you have to read one book minimum, I am suggesting this. Not this one. This is NCRT. Vipan Chandra's masterpiece. This every Indian should read this book, not only for UPSC. Wonderful. India's struggle for independence. India's struggle for independence. That's enough. Post-independence is there. There is a book by Bibhan Chandra. But it's just two, three chapters from that book. India after independence by Bibhan Chandra. India after independence by Bibhan Chandra. India since independence. The name changed recently. India since independence. That... I don't want you to purchase that. Just three chapters you need to study. And not only that, we will cover that in the class. Okay. So three modules are there. Post-independence that we can finish in two classes. Nothing there. Just the making of the constitution of India. Then the land reforms after independence. The rise of the tribals and the Dalits in the politics. And the science and technology under Nehru and India's foreign policy. No need to purchase any book that we will cover in the class. 
and then the world history all the books are other than ncrt all the books are reference books only you need not study everything there this one this one volume c this book only again a reference material history of all civilizations now the price is very high 820 and all world civilizations okay then one more book for modern world history norman law mastering world history by norman law so total 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 books books eight books as reference this is what is required and other things we will be dealt in the class with the dictated notes then you may have another fear that people will say that history is not scoring history option is not scoring history option is far better than public administration political science sociology and literature in scoring that i will prove see history option is not scoring i have just taken the for the purpose i mean under shaita we didn't do any newspaper ads and all because of the covid and the number of students were also very less in the online mode so this is my newspaper ad in 2018 this is the 2018 2017 is the examination result is coming in 2018 this year 2022 we will say 2021 this is my six winners in the year 2018 and you can just go through their marks all are my students and see their marks it's almost same for all and it is very high mark also more than nearly 60 percentage mohammed junaid from kerala 276 now ias officer in jaipur anjanay 286 now ips officer in chatisgarh he wanted this uh, ips so he kept that abhinav kumar 286 now irs his rank was 500 and he got irs only 286 rishu priya 286 so you see three with the same marks 286 286 286 then chitra vijayan from trivandrum 280 and mohammed shabir from kolikod 255 shabir got better marks earlier but when he got into service he got some 15 marks less this is one example that the students are getting. i took this only just to say that this is scoring option and this is not this year four years back five years back also when the so called history option was not scoring my students were appearing the mains are getting good marks and they are entering the service okay then next see i will show the winners see this year topper parth gupta 72nd rank see parth gupta score in 2018 you see that this is parth gupta's answer sheet in 2018 see the mark of history how much he got 275 not recommended he didn't clear that i am not the one to show the winners only i am just showing you the people who couldn't uh, didn't clear also parth gupta in 2018 didn't clear but he got 275 marks for history so the my students who are attending the mains whether they clear the service or not clearing the service history marks is almost stable for all this is his mark in that year that year he didn't get much marks in the uh, interview he he slightly missed at that time just for eight marks only he missed that year eight marks 275 clear now let's see the parth gupta in 2019 same parth gupta 2019 got into the service this time he got slightly less marks in history but still 269 that is his range is almost that stable 275 269 not much difference and this year 2019 average all the options were scoring 20 marks less average scoring for all the option was less than 20 marks than the previous year still part managed 269 got into service with the rank of 250 250 was the rank in 2019 now parth gupta this year this year parth gupta 72nd rank with a huge mark in history 287 287 is the mark so 275 269 287 and this time 72nd rank ias parth gupta 
from Kashmir, my student in Bangalore. And he was taking uh, test series in Rivandro. Rivandro was not a test series here, the main series. Not this time, in 2019 when he cleared. So this is one thing about the history option. See, all the three years when Park given the means, his history was strong and stable. Either this is not a subject with volatility. This is a subject the advantage is that you study something, you can write anything even after five years. But the certain subjects, the dynamic subjects like public administration, political science and all, sociology and all, every year the thoughts and the things changes and you have to frequently update the notes. History, once you've done the paper, that's enough. No need for further updation. So once you are true with the subject, you can simply score the marks. Then next. Then Chitra. Chitra 2017, first time when she cleared, her first attempt, her first attempt, retiring from State Bank of India. She was 30 years. At the age of 29, she resigned the PO job. Then I think I told this in that orientation class. First attempt, she got the service. See her mark, 280. 280 was her mark in the history option in 2017 examination, 2018. Then, sorry, 280 marks. Then Chitra, next year, 2018, when she got IAS, see the marks, 285. 280 in 2017, 285 in the next year. And she was almost close to the topper mark. See, very rarely options get more than 300 marks. 300 is a great achievement in any option. See, option marks is 240, 250. Other subjects. So this is way good. I don't know about other academies and other faculties, but I can give with the full confidence that my students will get marks. At the end of conference. Then next. Again, Angel Raj from Trivandrum. See, she is the student who got the maximum market among all my students, 293. She's the only one to score above 290 among my students. 293 was her, and she got recommended into the service. 293, highest mark, Angel Raj. See the other marks, General Studies paper 1, 79, 84, 89. And she survived because history only. Because of this option only, she cleared that service. If any other option, she got 250, she was out. So history was never a trouble for anyone. My students who are writing the means, they are getting the marks. Then, can you clear what are you going to Akhil. Akhil in the garden, he didn't clear this time prelims. First time 2018. His first attempt, and he was so much enthusiastic that year, and he got mark 280. 280 was the mark of Agil. See, 150 to 128. And 152 is very strong mark. If you had seen that, very rarely people get good marks in paper one. Because paper two is the one, usually the people used to score well. But here, he came down in the paper two, but he got very, very good mark in paper one. 280, but he couldn't clear because all other marks, 81, 84, 81, 85. GS papers went bad. But history paper, he got very good mark. See how it is. If he was a, uh, he was very good in the subjects, he could have scored good marks in GS2. How he can score that much mark in history? So that's the guidance he got. Other one down, he scored like that. Very next year, Agil came again for uh, option. This time his mark came down. See, I told that that year average 20 marks came down. That year Agil's performance was not that excellent. He got 200, 236 songs. Still, his performance in the GS papers further went down, 65. From 80s, he went down to 65. In paper essay, also he came down. So his problem was not exactly history, other subjects. So I'm saying that my students who are writing the means, they are getting marks in history. So this is not the case that only winners are getting history mark. It's because of the proper guidance and test series and the way they are getting the marks. Then... Chitra, optional war, big Rishu, Smilna. Then Rishu Priya. Rishu in 2018. Rishu got 286, I think. Yeah. 
200, 270, 279, 286. 286 was the mark. And that helped her to get into the service. And she got very good marks at that year. SA 141, GS1, 111, 95, 122, 82. Very good marks she got. And that was the year 2017, people got good marks. Okay. And she got into the service, 545 rank, now in IRTS, Indian Railway Traffic Service. Then, again, the next year, Rishu Priya, again, she got qualified. And that time also, has, her paper marks was not that bad. She got uh, 250, 260. History 260. So, whatever happens, you will be in this range of 260 to 290. And that to just follow the class notes. For such effort, you can cross 300. But no one takes that effort. Everyone finally focus on the class notes. But class notes are okay, Mari. This marks will be there. That's the guarantee. Because I was the topper of UPSC history optional in 2014. UPSC history optional topper in 2014. Okay. And I am giving what I studied, what I had written. That attitude is not there. So that's why the results are there. Then next. Then Smilna again, uh, my student. Smilna in 2018, she couldn't clear the means. Not qualified main examination. But still her marks in history was... 135, 135, 272, 272 was her mark. Even though she couldn't clear in that year, 272. And the very next year, she qualified also. She is now in forest service. She took forest service only. Though she could get IPS, she preferred forest service from Kannu. So this is how the marks are there. So this is, this I just demonstrated just only because I want to show that marks are there. And not only that, I am a faculty not just coming in the classroom and taking the notes. I used to support all my students every time. And for that, I will show you one thing. This is a screenshot of a selfie. Parth Gupta, Milna, Rishu. This is the time when all came for a test series time. In one evening, we were having tea in Bangalore. So full support at that time. When this COVID was there, everything uh, derailed. We couldn't meet anyone. Angle issues on that. So this is Parth, Milna, Rishu. Uh, he is now in Andhra service, Vijay. And Krishna Prasa, uh, not um, Krishna Das and Nihar, they couldn't clear till now. Vijay got Andhra service and he is happy with that. The other three are in the service. Parth, Milna, Rishu. So this is regarding the history optional. Okay. Then I am not taking any subject and all because you people are already in my class, you know. And for the sake of a demo class, if I take one topic and this is history, that won't give the feel of the class. Class class I did the matre, it will be a feel there. So this is regarding the history option. I can guarantee that this subject is a very simple subject. And we will finish that in no time. Pattern number the UNG. We will cover the syllabus in the detail way also. We, know, uh, we can clear this. The only thing required is that follow the things and regularly write the answers and the test. That's it. See, this is like any other option. I'm not saying that you take history, you will get good marks simply because of history. You take sociology, you take uh, public administration, Malayalam, whatever it is. If you put the effort according to your teacher's plan, definitely you will get marks. And I am not responsible for other students not getting marks for history. And the students in the garden, okay. I have to bother only about my students. Other teachers, other students who are not getting good marks in history, that's not the problem of me. End of Allah. So people may try history and didn't get marks and saying that, oh, history, we are not able to. So, till this day, no student of mine said that because of history, we lose. Not only the winner's results, I had seen, uh, shown this uh, results of the people who couldn't clear. So, he's my student. His history option, writing the means this time. So, this is what I would like to say in the demo class. The first thing is that I am 100% confident in the history of it. Okay. And if you have confidence, you can join the session. We have the class on Monday. You can attend two sessions or three sessions. Then you can decide. That much option I can give. That always I give. I never ask my students to pay the fees before. No, nothing like that. You should be satisfied in the class. It's your satisfaction. It's not because of Shobhan George or anyone, you take the class. 
do take the class because this optional is very crucial. You can see that many people clear the service because of the optional marks. The options plays very big role because general studies marks is almost same for everyone. It won't differ much. The top ranger and the last one who entered the mains, the gap will be maximum 20 to 30 in the GS papers. Okay, so sometimes the rank number one got 95 marks in paper one, but there will be some others will get 100, 105 in paper one. Like that, the edge is in the optional as well as essay paper. Essay paper also decides. Some people get 121, 15 for essay, but there are people who get 140, 145 in essay. Such people, so the defining things or the differentiation comes in essay and optional. So choose your optional YC. Second thing, the criteria to choose the optional is the faculty is available for you. Is the faculty is readily available for you? That is one thing because you will write the notes and you have to get it corrected and all. So if the faculty is available, second thing, the sources. See, history, you will get plenty of books. So you can get the sources to study that. But many other subjects like philosophy and all, for example, what you will study? Because most of the philosophical books in India is written in Hindi. Very few books are there in English. So there are some issues like that. So either kind of criteria you have to choose while selecting your optionals. Okay. Any doubts? If you have, you can ask. No need, no current affairs in the history option. No need to worry about that. Hmm. See, once you are studying history optional, then no need to study the GS history. That is a good thing. Then advantage? Yeah, yes. Ah. See, the advantage of taking history optional is that. Any history option advantage for that. Advantage is that every year you will get a minimum 16 to 22 questions in your prelims from history. No other subjects guarantees this. Economy and all, sometimes it will go up to 25, sometimes it will come down to 10. Quality, sometimes one question, it can go up to 25. Geography, it can be sometimes no question and it can go up to 20. History is always static. It, you will get minimum 16 to 22. You can just check the last five years question or 10 years question. 22 questions will be there and optional student in whatever criteria, uh, situation you will be in a position to answer minimum 80. And that is almost one third of your prelims. Okay, one third of your prelims victory will be this. That is one advantage. Second thing, paper two, you will be studying, uh, sorry, that in the mains GS, you will be studying modern India and world history and also the culture. This adds up. 70% of the history syllabus. So if you are taking history option, that time can be saved for other subjects. Otherwise, if you take history, not history, you have to again study modern India, world history, ancient India, medieval India, and you will have to take huge time to study that also. So that time can be saved if you are taking history option. Prelims, you will get this much question. Mains, you will get questions plus time can be saved and that can be used for other subjects. So that's the advantage of history. That is geography, political sciences, they will get advantage in the certain papers. See, in the Persian terms, they cannot fire them. Chronological sequence. We have the techniques to that. You know, one more thing. In the mains, actually, we are not studying the names as such. Means we will cover the things without any name and year also. Means is analysis. See, for example, I will just say decline of Indus Valley. Assume that there is a topic called a decline of Indus Valley. So first we will say that this is still a speculative issue and there is no clear cut evidence regarding the decline of Indus Valley. There are several viewpoints in the history. One viewpoint says that Aryan invasion theory. Aryan invasion theory. See, this is exactly the mains class, but I am making it in an average way. Okay, we will have a little more explanation in the class, but for your understanding, there is a viewpoint that Aryans came and destroyed this Indus Valley civilization. But on the basis of historical studies, we found that Indus Valley was declined around 1800 BC, and Aryans never entered India before 1500 BC. 
so there is a clear time gap of 300 years so the aryan invasion theory is rejected so here it is we are not giving any fact other than aryan invasion theory there is another viewpoint in the history that floods destroyed indus valley civilization floods destroyed so if you know the person who brought up the theory you can write the name if you don't know you write that there is a viewpoint in the history you have to manage the things see assume that john marshall brought flood theory but you cannot write uh, it as pinarai um, vijayan or ramesh nithin okay assume that the situation that you don't know the name of the historian you just say that there is a viewpoint in the history or scholars a series of scholars propounded the view that floods destroyed in this valley civilization but we are rejecting the floods theory because of two reasons one is the enormous size of the civilization that civilization extended from kashmir to maharashtra from iran border to uttar pradesh cannot be destroyed by a flood that is one thing second point also we will write there 40% of the indus valley civilization was in the semi desert zone of ran of kutch and baluchistan where no river and no chance of flooding so we cannot say that flooding destroyed this civilization another theory says that drying up of the rivers third theory we will see drying up of rivers and historian said that saraswati river which was running through rajasthan and haryana dried up and that led to the end of this civilization but we will say that indus valley's decline was in 1800 bc but saraswati river is mentioned in vedic age so that shows that drying up of this river was later so in this way we say so many theories and finally we will conclude history option we will conclude how the conclusion points will like that we cannot attribute a single cause for the decline of this civilization so that's what we will say finally we will summarize the thing we cannot some we cannot say a single causative factor behind the decline of this civilization many factors might have played different role in many areas so there is a lack of uniformity in the process of decline so e reedil we are giving analysis and it is 100 times interesting than the prelims class nammude mains we are not coming with the names years and all we will manage the things very easy way adana nammude the mains in the advantage we are not studying the names and the figures we will just go with the analysis of the thing analysis aanu ivada nammal nadathunnathu why this happened see for example mohammed bin tughlaq's capital shift we will say that he conquered south india and the reason for the shift of the capital was to administer south and north effectively from a centralized location but this failed first reason we say forceful evacuation of people from delhi the leading people of delhi they protested second point absence of sultan from the north created problems in the north and even after shifting the capital to south india sultan failed to control south india as vijayanagar and all became independent reen karyangal nammal relate cheythu padikkanda karyam ullu we are not mentioning any name mohammed bin tughlaq you will remember okay that's it in modern india see for example i am saying that first world war is a topic first world war we are studying and in the entire first world war causes of the first world war we are mentioning just one name just one name is mentioned in the entire course of the first world war that is franz ferdinand franz ferdinand this is the archduke of austria hungary who was shot dead by a serbian and that led to the first world war first world war na are causes und imperialistic rivalries conflicts within europe formation of rival alliances incidents preceding the war like balkan crisis and the immediate cause the assassination of franz ferdinand or otta pere evada parayunu and if you don't know franz ferdinand also no problem the assassination of austrian archduke ini parishara samayath archduke ormo onnilla adakka varu kotta ningal pedikkanum venda because you have the potential even if you don't know the name you can write austrian archduke he archduke willengil austrian prince nu ezhudi vachalum it's not wrong dan ivadatha reethi so i am saying that history options is not like the history prelims this is entirely different 100% different here we are giving analysis uh, in the mains prelims we are focused more on 
factual things because the UPSC's OMR question is factual oriented. Here it is analysis. Analysis is the things. So analyzing the events. That the thing we study. See, modern India and all, very simple. We can cover that. Very simple. And I can, I guarantee you, you attend the class on Monday or at the second day, you will see the magic of history. That I can guarantee. First class, just attend first class on Monday and you can see what the option is. Just attend the class and then decide. Okay. See, after all, you are writing how many history lay it was a mark and a question at two You are writing only 200 words, so sometimes it can go up to 230 words. You You write uh, five, six points, it is all, almost 200 words will be there. There is another advantage. Just remember a few points and you will write. We guarantee it. I don't know mark it. And they all follow the class notes. Class notes, but the test series is okay. You will get the marks. You will feel the simplicity of the subjects within one or two weeks. Either class you will like it, but within one or two weeks, you will understand that this is not a vast subject. Because I can take Krishna Devaya for long. Okay. See, for example, uh, see, today we studied Nayagar system. Nayagar system. See, there can be a question like this. Nayagar system was both a strength and weakness for the Vijayanagar Empire. This will be a question for 10 marks only. Okay, so how we will address that? First point, we will write what is Nayagar system. Nayagar system, how we will write? Nayagar system was then was the most remarkable feature of Vijayanagar administration. And the Nayaks were the hereditary military aristocrats who supplied army for the Vijayanagar rulers. So that's the first point. Second point, we will say why the Vijayanagar king was uh, dependent on the Nayaks. So that point we will be addressing in the mains, not in the GS class. That's why I didn't mention. See, Vijayanagar 13th. Bamini Kingdom, 1347. They were created within 10 years. And they were in the same Deccan fighting against each other. From the beginning itself, Vijayanagar was constantly fighting with the Bamanis. Vijayanagar was constantly fighting with the Bamanis. These are the dynastic names only. Other than Delhi Sultanate, we are studying only Vijayanagar and Bamanis in medieval India. Sultanate part. So no need to worry. Only one Sultanate, Delhi, Vijayanagar and Bamanis. That's all. Mughal period, we will study Mughals and the Marathas. That's all. No many, no hundreds of dynasties and all. So Vijayanagar from the very beginning, they were fighting with the Bamanis and thus the Vijayanagar rulers had no time to maintain or develop a strong centralized army. And that's why they were dependent on the Nayaks. So Vijayanagar rulers were heavily dependent on the Nayaks. Nayaks army go to the lingil, Vijayanagar will be uh, doomed. Third point. This Nayaks were controlled well only during the period of powerful rulers like Krishna Devaraya. So Nayaks always had their ambition. See, Nayaks always had their ambition. They wanted to become the rulers and all. So the Nayaks were controlled only under certain strong Vijayanagar rulers like Krishna Devaraya. And from time, this Vijayanagar rulers tried to control the Nayaks through appointing a special officer. If you remember Mahamandalesha, you write that. Or else, appointed special officers to control the Nayaks and also monopolize the import of the horses. So, by now, three points are there. Almost 100 words crossed. Okay. And the last point can say that under the weak rulers, these Nayaks expressed their uh, desire for more autonomy and that contributed to the decline of Vijayanagar. Immediately after Talikota, Vijayanagar got disintegrated into many Nayaga kingdoms. I said that today Vijayanagar vanished. What vanishment is that? That immediately after Talikota, central power became weakened. So Nayaks took it as an opportunity and they disintegrated Vijayanagar like Mysore Nayaks. But we are not writing this Mysore Nayaks, Tanjavur Nayaks, Madurai Nayaks, Velur Nayaks. You are not writing these Nayak names. We will write that after the fall of Talikota, Nayaks took this as an opportunity and they broke up the Vijayanagar Empire into numerous Nayaga kingdoms. You might have heard about Tirumala Naikar of Madurai and all these Nayaga kingdoms. Thus, finally, we will 
you can write that thus vijayanagar this nayagar system proved to be a strength and weakness when it helped the vijayanagar to conquer all these areas and once it was weakened it contributed to the decline so that i used to write like this thus nayagar system proved to be a double edged sword idala murshiyalla wala double edged sword which shed the blood for vijayanagar and also shed the blood of vijayanagar this is how the points are given oralde peru pole ivada nammal parnathu except krishna devaraya and krishna devaraya anyone studies vijayanagar will remember that name atre ullu nammal padikunnu then modern india assume that see freedom struggle let us start the freedom struggle from 1885 1885 il freedom struggle padikumbo we but nammal padikuna peru ao hume dufrin Pirosha Mehta. Here the parents are asking for it. They will be called the moderates. Okay, Pirosha Mehta, Gokhale, Dada Bai Navaroji, then Lal Bal Pal, Lala Lajpat Rai, Bal Ganga, Tilak and Bipin Chandra Pal, Lord Curzon. 1885 model, 1905 model. Again, the parents are asking. Did you know that Kolkata parents are also different? Maybe. Other than that, all other names you know. then from 1905 the split of the indian national congress till 1916 you are not studying any other names 1916 we will study any person 1917 we will mention gandhi for the first time then we will study the names nehru sardar patel subhash chandra bose then two three voice royals of the british erwin Wellington, Lenlithgow. That is 1942. Our E period will be known as the Indian Union. This is the area where we are not going to be. And in 1942, we will study Cripps. Stafford Cripps came to India. Cripps Mission. Name is again over. 1945. Very well. Mount Batten, Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Finished. There are many modern India mains to be studied. But let us not forget about the period we are going to be. This is what we are studying in modern India. because we are not writing the names then we will study some other names also bhagat singh chandrashekhar azad revolutionary movement when we study then we will study few communist leaders names that mn roy nalini gupta angane korchu kodi peru nammal padikkunnathu upsc ku vendi taanallo and which subject is not without facts ed subject na fact illatha you just study the theory of this subjects adu kaanada padikka endu mathra alla you have you cannot change their thoughts and theories you have to reproduce that the same you don't have the right to abridge the marx theory but history ningalku ningalde bhashayil irukku then for example if you are studying geography assume that bottom topography of the atlantic ocean see assume that this is atlantic ocean see idu onnare njan ridicule cheyunnalla to i am just comparing with all the subjects idu ella subjects um aalkar jeikunnana mark kittunnu nammada naatil ella ocean ilum bottom topography undu the ocean is with the hills the steep falls gorges trenches the mottam nammal padikana idu kaanada padikende all the names and all idina ore 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 pair eclipses guyots um then so many names are there history il padikunnadine kal you will have to study hundreds of technical terms than history in other subjects and you have to study the names of the people there also ore theory varumbo ore see sociology when i writing a theory you have to definitely quote the name of person who brought that theory still adil lelum korpulla history there is a view point in the history and even if you don't know anything about a subject you can just simply manage that on the basis of a deeper analysis in a close observation no we are not observing anything closely or deeper we are managing the things this is just a matter of writing parji karyam padichittu you can manage it the subject it's not like you are going to study entire history syllabus ullathu mathram padicha we are studying the syllabus only we are not studying that mahatma gandhi dandi yatra nadathiya po day 1 evadnu jaya kudichu day 3 evada kada nurangi we are not studying that we are not studying such things adu oru quiz ne ga chodikkayirikkum we are not preparing for the quiz competition we know what to deal with this subject ningal pare questions ok eduthu nokku that's it threyana history option la parayanullu prelims prelims it can be as any even you just check the prelims questions names valare korava they will come with the terms only nammal ipo enna padichale fa zakat jizya divane mustaqraj anginulla terms aanu ancient medieval prelims il chodikkunnathu 
ബട്ട് ഐ കനോട്ട് ടേക്ക് ദ ക്ലാസ് വിത്തൌട്ട് മെൻഷനിങ് അലൌദ്ദിൻ ഖൽജി ഏതോ ഒരു രാജാവ് സക്കാത്ത് കൊണ്ടുവന്നു പറയാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ലല്ലോ so that's why for the sake of the class i am explaining that in a story when the story is mentioned the name of the rulers to be mentioned athre ullu see if i give you some facts only you will never understand the subject adunda prelims ne class edukumbo we are explaining the names and all but mains is entirely different just to a session on the tend it ok monday you will get the facts. okay we'll start with the modern india okay as i am taking ancient and medieval in the class adu ne repeat cheyunnilla i will start with the modern india paper 2 we will start first modern india world history then we will start ancient india medieval india because these are not connected adu kittunengi option subject padikunna varke history ad answer cheyanu or advantage ullu gs nadu thiri prashna onnilla the thing is that uh, for that nadu ipo class padipikunna karyangal okke thanne vararullu because ee oru varsham mathramana some questions came very difficult otherwise from our class notes you used to get almost all the questions padikunna class notes follow cheyidam then uh this year i just ask you to follow the ncrt also alladhe idil kodu namukku padikkan pattathillallo you cannot study over 10 books to prepare for ups idonnum prepare cheyadane aalkar clear avunnundallo just one or two books confidence madhi namukku automatically the things will follow adana varu nammal eppozhum you have to be confident in this entire preparation and there will be the times you may feel that angu poi atmaathi eda madhi nu thonunna situation vare undaa it happens angane thonniyillengilum you will feel dejected you will feel depressed ella idinde bhagavana understand that so that's it adana parayala and the subjects and all upsc il nammle adu pole questions nokku nammle class cover cheyumbo thanne adu kittunnana normally i didn't find any history questions difficult ee varsham joyichu rendu questions aanu aa chanakyan arthashastra okku vaichi answer cheyan aarkum pattunnalla and you should not read the chanakyas book chanakyan full book um padichittu ini adu varsham question varunu yarichal adhi nonnu varathilla so leave some questions yan parannallo you are not going to write all the 100 questions in the prelims maximum you will be writing around 80 adhe parnaya nalla class orientation parnaya nalla questions etra eludum athre ullu so you can leave certain areas pedikinda karyam onnilla and there is nothing called a syllabus completion other than the option optional le mathra aanu namukku syllabus ullu that we will complete gs we will never complete anything called uh, syllabus maximum required minimum required athre ullu and rest you do the maximum test and all automatically the things will follow ayi pedikinda karyam onnilla pedichal kittathilla This is a fight. Fight it well. That's all. Oh, you madhi. Well, that's simple. I'll listen. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. The same answers what I had written in the answer sheet. That's what I'm going to tell you. Mapa. That's why I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. ആ വരച്ചു വെച്ചാൽ മാർക്ക് കിട്ടും പക്ഷെ അതിന് സമയമൊന്നും ഉണ്ടാവില്ല ജോഗ്രഫിക്കാ കൂടുതൽ വരയ്ക്കുന്നത് അല്ല മാപ്പ് എങ്ങനെയാണെന്ന് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞുതരാം ഹിസ്റ്ററിയുടെ മാപ്പ് ഞാനൊക്കെ പണ്ട് പഠിപ്പിച്ചതും ഞാൻ രണ്ടാമത് എഴുതിയപ്പോഴും മാപ്പ് ഇത് സിമ്പിളായിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞുതരാം മാപ്പ് എനിക്ക് അത്യാവശ്യം മാർക്ക് കിട്ടുന്നൊരു ഏരിയ ആണ് ദാറ്റ് ഐ വിൽ സേ ഹൗ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എനിക്ക് മാപ്പ് ഇഷ്ടമാണ് ജോഗ്രഫി ഞാൻ പഠിപ്പിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് ഐ നോ ദാറ്റ് സബ്ജക്ട് വെൽ എനിക്ക് സബ്ജക്ട് ഇഷ്ടമാണ് ജോഗ്രഫി ഇഷ്ടമാണ് ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഇഷ്ടമാണ് പോളിറ്റി ഒക്കെ ഇഷ്ടമാണ് ബട്ട് ദിസ് ഇസ് മൈ സബ്ജക്ട് മൈ പോസ്റ്റ് ഗ്രാജുവേഷൻ സബ്ജക്ട് ആൻഡ് എവറിങ് ഇസ് ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഹിസ്റ്ററിയോടുള്ള താല്പര്യം കൊണ്ടാണ് ഞാൻ ഇതൊക്കെ പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് അല്ലാതെ വേറെ ഒന്നും ഉണ്ടായിട്ടല്ല ഐ വിൽ സേ ദാറ്റ് പണ്ട് എങ്ങനെയാണെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ദേ വിൽ ഗീവ് ദ പ്ലേസ് ആൻഡ് വി ഹാവ് ടു മാർക്ക് ഇറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ മാപ്പ് അത് അത്ര എളുപ്പമായിരുന്നില്ല ബട്ട് സ്റ്റിൽ വി മാനേജ് ദൻ ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ സംഭവം എങ്ങനെയാണെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഐ വിൽ ഷോ യു സി ദിസ് ഈസ് ഹൗ ദ മാപ്സ് വിൽ ബി ദ ഇങ്ങനെ പോയിന്റ്സിനും ഫ്ലാഗ് അല്ല ഒരു ഡോട്ട് മാർക്ക് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ദർ വിൽ ബി ദ കീസ് ജസ്റ്റ് സീ ദിസ് സേ വൺ ടു ത്രീ ഫോർ ഫൈവ് സിക്സ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഇരുപത് മാപ്പ് എൻട്രി ഉണ്ടാവും നമുക്ക് ട്വന്റി മാപ്പ് എൻട്രീസ് വിൽ ബി ദർ വൺ ടു ആൻഡ് ടു പോയിന്റ് ഫൈവ് മാർക്ക് അങ്ങനെ അമ്പത് മാർക്ക് വൺ ആൻഡ് ഇൻസ്ക്രിപ്ഷണൽ സൈറ്റ് to ancient capital 3 prehistoric cultural site 4 inscriptional site 5 birth place of a philosopher and that place of a philosopher where are going ancient port
सिक्स बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ ए फिलोसोफर एंशियंट फोर्ट एंड सिक्स वन बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ ए फिलोसोफर ഞാൻ ക്ലാസ്സിലെ മാപ്പ് വരയ്ക്കുന്നത് ജസ്റ്റ് ഫോർ ഇവർ അതുകൊണ്ട് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് കുറച്ചുകൂടെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ എളുപ്പം മനസ്സിലാവുന്നില്ലേ പോ പണ്ടൊന്നും വരയ്ക്കത്തില്ല അത് ഈ ഇന്ററാക്റ്റീവ് ബോർഡ് വന്നതുകൊണ്ടാണ് അതർവൈസ് വൈറ്റ് ബോർഡ് ആൻഡ് അത് ചോക്കൊക്കെ ആയിരുന്നു ആദ്യം പഠിപ്പിച്ചു തുടങ്ങിയ സമയത്ത് അന്നൊന്നും വരയ്ക്കുന്നില്ല ഇതിലിപ്പോ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ആൻസർ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റുമോ ഇൻസ്ക്രിപ്ഷണൽ സൈഡ് എവിടെയാ ലൊക്കേഷൻ അഫ്ഗാനിസ്ഥാൻ അഫ്ഗാനിസ്ഥാനിൽ നിങ്ങൾ പഠിച്ച ഇൻസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻ ഏതാ മേജർ റോക്ക് അഡിക്ട് ഓഫ് അശോക ബൈലിംഗ് വെൽ ഇൻസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻ എവിടായിരുന്നു കാണ്ടഹാർ ദാറ്റ്സ് ഇറ്റ് അപ്പോ യു ഹാവ് ടു ഐഡന്റിഫൈ അഫ്ഗാനിസ്ഥാനിൽ അധികം ഇൻസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻ ഒന്നുമില്ല ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ലൊക്കേറ്റ് ഇൻ സൗത്ത് അഫ്ഗാനിസ്ഥാൻ ആൻസർ കാണ്ടഹാർ So Kandahar you write you will get one mark then you have to write that Kandahar we discovered a bilingual inscription of Ashoka it was one of the major rocks of Ashoka it is located in present day Afghanistan ancient Gandhara kingdom's capital like that two and a half marks one mark for identification one and half mark for writing writing means just in 30 words four points you will write correctly you will get two and half marks okay and that two in the point format not sentence format second one ancient capital rajasthan il ningal padichittulla ancient capital edha chindikku we studied only one mahajanapada in rajasthan otte mahajanapada rajasthan lo matsya capital virad nagara so virad nagar third one prehistoric cultural site prehistoric edha paleolithic period mesolithic period if you studied something cultural there remember that you answered then when we were taking that class at that time and then i was saying that sir yeah bimbetka 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 that's a prehistoric site where we discovered the rock paintings aa prehistoric site they ivide ayirengilo you will say mirzapur okay then fourth one inscriptional site major rock edict of ashoka dolly then fifth one ancient forts para musiris musiris ella ella rendu varsham kodumbol chodikkunnathu sixth one birthplace of a philosopher nepal la janicha philosopher ara buddha lumbini so they will give hints and you have to identify engena padikku ennu yosichal no need to worry about that map edukka paleolithic sites eduga ദൻ അടുത്ത മാപ്പിൽ മെസോലിത്തിക് സൈറ്റ് എഴുതുക അടുത്തതിൽ നിയോലിത്തിക് എഴുതുക ദെൻ ചാൽക്കോലിത്തിക് എഴുതുക ദെൻ മേക്ക് എ മാപ്പ് ഫോർ ഇൻഡസ് വാലി ദെൻ മേക്ക് എ മാപ്പ് ഫോർ വേദിക്കേഷ് ദെൻ മേക്ക് എ മാപ്പ് ഫോർ മഹാജനപത ദെൻ മൗര്യ അശോകൻ ഇൻസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻ വൺ സൈഡ് അതർ പ്ലേസസ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു പത്ത് ഇരുപത് ഹെഡിങ്ങിൽ എല്ലാ മാപ്പ് റെഡിയാക്കിയിട്ട് അത് ഡെയിലി ഇരുന്ന് അഞ്ചെണ്ണം വെച്ചോ രണ്ടെണ്ണം വെച്ചോ പ്രാക്ടീസ് ചെയ്താൽ ഒരു വർഷം കണ്ട് ഇതെല്ലാം സിമ്പിളായി കഴിക്കും ഐ എം മേക്കിംഗ് ദ മാപ്പ് ആൻഡ് ലൊക്കേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് എക്സാക്ട്ലി ദ പ്ലേസ് ഐ എം മാർക്കിംഗ് ദാറ്റ് എന്താന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ വെൻ ഐ എം ടേക്കിംഗ് ദ ക്ലാസ് ദിസ് ഈസ് എ റിവിഷൻ എഗെയിൻ ഫോർ മീ അതുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ അത് മറന്നു പോകത്തില്ല പ്രാക്ടീസ് ദാറ്റ്സ് ഓൾ എന്ത് കാര്യത്തിനാണെങ്കിലും വി ഹാവ് ദ മെക്കനിസ് ഓക്കെ റെസ്റ്റ് ഇസ് ഇൻ ദ ക്ലാസ് ക്ലാസ് അറ്റൻഡ് യു ജസ്റ്റ് അറ്റൻഡ് ഈസ്റ്റ് ഓപ്ഷൻ എടുത്താലും എടുത്തില്ലെങ്കിൽ യു ജസ്റ്റ് അറ്റൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് മൺഡേ ക്ലാസ് യു വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് ദ ഫീൽ ഓഫ് ദ സബ്ജെക്ട് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് മോഡേൺ ഇന്ത്യ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ബെനിഫിഷ്യൽ ഫോർ യു ഓക്കെ നിങ്ങളെ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ആരെങ്കിലും ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അവരോട് വന്ന് അറ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്തോളാൻ പറയും ഇഫ് ദേ ആർ ഡൗട്ട്ഫുൾ അബൌട്ട് വിച്ച് ഓപ്ഷൻ ചുമ്മാ ഒന്ന് അറ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറയും മൺഡേ ട്യൂസ്ഡേ തേഴ്സ്ഡേ ഫ്രൈഡേ ബുധനാഴ്ച മാത്രമാവും ഒരു വൈകുന്നേരമെങ്കിലും നമുക്ക് പുറത്ത് വേണ്ടേ ആൻഡ് ത്രീ മന്ത്സ് മാക്സിമം ഫോർ മന്ത്സ് ആ അത് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ഒരു സെഷനെ പാടുള്ളൂ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ മൂന്ന് സെഷനൊക്കെ വന്നാൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് പറ്റുമോ അല്ല ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓപ്ഷൻ ടൈമിംഗ് ഇപ്പോൾ നിലവിൽ വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന ടൈമിംഗ് ഇസ് ഫൈവ് തേർട്ടി ടു എയ്റ്റ് ബട്ട് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ഡിപ്പെൻഡ് ഓൺ അഡ്മിഷൻ ഒക്കെ വന്നു കഴിയുമ്പോൾ എല്ലാവരെയും കൺവീനിയൻ ടൈമിംഗ് ഇഫ് യു ആർ റെഡി ഫോർ ടു തേർട്ടി ടു ഫൈവ് യു വിൽ ഡു അറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ടൈം അതാ അങ്ങനെ ചെയ്യാം എനിക്കും വലിയ നിർബന്ധം ഒന്നുമില്ല ഈ വൈകുന്നേരം പോയി അഞ്ചു മണി മുതൽ എട്ട് മണി വരെ പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നൊന്നുമില്ല ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ചെന്നൈ ടൈമിംഗ് ഓക്കെ ഫൈവ് തേർട്ടി ടു എയ്റ്റ് ഡിപ്പെൻസ് ഓൺ ദ കൺവീനിയൻസ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ അഡ്മിഷൻ എല്ലാവരും എടുത്ത് കഴിയുമ്പോൾ വിൽ ഡിസൈഡ് ദാറ്റ് ദാറ്റ്സ് ഫ്ലെക്സിബിൾ അത് കുഴപ്പമൊന്നുമില്ല കാരണം ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി പ്രോബ്ലം ഫോർ ഐസ് ഓൾസോ യൂച്ചോറ ക്ലാസ് എടുത്തിട്ട് പിന്നെ വെറുതെ പോയി കുറച്ച് നേരം ഇരുന്നിട്ട് വീ
അത് നിങ്ങളുടെ സൗകര്യം പോലെ ഫീൽഡ് വാൻ നിലവിൽ ഫൈവ് തേർട്ടി ടു എയ്റ്റ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നു ദാറ്റ്സ് ഓപ്ഷണൽ ടൈമിങ്സ് ഓൺലൈൻ ആയിരുന്നു അപ്പോഴും ആ ടൈമിങ്ങിൽ ക്ലാസ് എടുത്തു ഡിപ്പെൻസ് ഓൺ ദ സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് ഓൺ എർലിയർ വി യൂസ് ക്ലബ് വിത്ത് ബാംഗ്ലൂർ ആൻഡ് ട്രിവാൻഡ്രം ഞാൻ ട്രിവാൻഡ്രം ട്രിവാൻഡ്രം ബാംഗ്ലൂർ സെപ്പറേ ഇവിടെ തീർന്നിട്ടാണ് ഇനി ബാംഗ്ലൂർ ഞാൻ ഓപ്ഷൻ ബാച്ച് തുടങ്ങുന്നത് ഇവിടെ തീർക്കുക ഫസ്റ്റ് അപ്പോൾ ഓഗസ്റ്റ് സെപ്റ്റംബർ അവസാനം കൊണ്ട് തന്നെ തീർക്കുന്നതാണ് എന്റെ പ്ലാൻ ബിക്കോസ് ഇഫ് ഐ എം സ്റ്റേയിങ് കണ്ടിന്യൂസ്ലി ഐ വി ക്യാൻ ഫിനിഷ് ദാറ്റ് പിന്നെ നിങ്ങൾ പേടിക്കും ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് എവ്രി അനാലിസിസ് ഇസ് ഗിവൺ ഇൻ ദ ക്ലാസ് അത് പഠിച്ചത് നിങ്ങളുടെ ഭാഷയിൽ എഴുതി വെക്കാന്നുള്ള ഡ്യൂട്ടി മാത്രമേ നിങ്ങൾക്കുള്ളൂ ഈവൻ ഇഫ് യു കുഡ് റീപ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ദ സെയിം നോട്ട്സ് ഓൾസോ യു വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് മാർക്സ് സോ ദാറ്റ്സ് ഇറ്റ് സി ദ പോയിന്റ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ഐ വിൽ ഫോക്കസ് ഓൺ ദ ക്ലാസ് പ്ലസ് റൈറ്റിംഗ് പാർട്ട് രണ്ടും നോക്കും ജസ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഓടി പോകല്ല ഈ അത് റൈറ്റിംഗ് പാർട്ട് ഓൾസോ ടു ബി ടേക്കൻ സോ റെഗുലർ ആയിട്ട് ടെസ്റ്റ് ഉണ്ടാകും സോ വി വിൽ സി ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ ക്ലാസ് ഷാൽ യു വൈൻഡ് അപ്പ് ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ സി യു ദൻ